So now we have a comparison graph, 10 most popular breeds, cats versus dogs, and the percentage bars are proportional with each other, so we can really visualize the data. Since these graphs represent a top 10, I'm going to number them from 1 to 10. I'm going to select the text tool, and I'm going to, um, I'm going to type in 1, and the size that we're going to use is 28 points, and everything else is fine. Avenir next bold. And I'm going to just hit return as I type my list. We want this to be a line center. I'm going to use my uh, neutral color here. For this, we can we can align this so that it's centered. And if I really want to be precise, I can draw, drag out a guideline and just make sure that this middle node is aligned with that. And then I want to make this so that these numbers align horizontally with the bars that they correspond with. So I can go into the letting and I can just adjust the letting until it looks about right. and I might need to put in a fraction, so 29.5, let's try that. So 29.5 looks about right. Now on this, I really want to adjust the kerning because I just think this is too wide of a gap between the one and the zero. So let's close that up. I put negative 100 kerning on that. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Next thing I need to do is to add some numbers for our percentages. So I'm going to drag out a text box and I'm going to type in 33, which is our longest percentage here. And for that one, we want 14 point and we want minus for tracking. And the color on this is going to be the same color as our background because it's going to go right inside of our bar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this text box and I'm going to position this the way I want it so that it looks like it's centered and it's a, a nice comfortable position in our bar. And then I'm going to Command C, Shift Command V, make a new one. Command C, Shift Command V, make a new one. And then I'm just going to do that for every one of my bars. And then I'm going to change the numbers and then I'm going to make sure that they're all aligned just the way I want them. So I'm doing this all manually. Now that we have our percentage numbers placed, we need to put labels on our graph. So I'm going to drag out a text box and I'm going to type in the first name of our uh, cat breed. And for this name, I want it to be this dark brown color. And it's already the correct size. I'm just going to make the tracking negative 25.
and then it's just a matter of um, of positioning these as well. I'm going to align this to the left. And I'm going to position this so that it is centered on our bar. And this one, since it's kind of long, I need to split that onto two lines because I don't want it going off into the margin. All right, so since this is two lines, I need to recenter that. Let me make the second one, which is only going to be on a single line. Again, all this data is available to you in the Word document. So what I'm doing is I'm taking this text frame and I'm aligning it with the bottom edge of the chart and making sure that this looks visually centered not necessarily that the text frame is centered but that visually this um, type looks centered I'm going to start creating the rest of my labels and I'm just copying and pasting the previous label and just to make things move a little bit more quickly I'm going to do it kind of in a, an assembly line fashion where I copy and paste all of the text first and position it. And then I'll go back and type in the new labels over the old text for each, uh, for each label. And then I'll, and then I'll position, I'll, uh, create the margin and then I'll do the same for the other side and on the other side I'm going to align the text to the right alright so what I could do actually is um, I could oops I could select all of these and I could nudge it over uh, press the arrow key four times so I already have my little white space there and then what I would do is just replace my text. Now that I have all my labels applied to my graph, I'm going to group these objects together so that I don't accidentally move them like that and then I'm going to group the entire thing and I can move this down to leave room for our um, dog and cat illustrations and for our title now that I have my graph with my labels and I noticed there were a couple typos so I fixed that I um, copied and pasted the title from the graph above it down below and then changed the text to match the graph that I have and I realized that I had forgotten to change this text uh, title text to that dark brown color which is our color that we're going to be using throughout the graph so I did do that and this also reflects that change so one thing that I want to pay attention to is the spacing. I want to keep things consistent from uh, throughout the infographic so that I'm not just randomly spacing things. And one kind of quick way I find to just kind of measure the spacing is to draw out a little rectangle that is the same depth as the space that I'm measuring and then drag it down to where I want to um, make the space the same. And what I could do is I could just drag this down and that would be spaced equally 
to the graph above it. But in this case, we have a subhead, and we need to add that in there first. So I'm going to actually make the subhead align with this um, little space down here. And the subhead I'm grabbing from this Word document. So in the Word document, we've got a subhead that just describes this as in order by percentage of owners. And that's listed under both the cat and the dog graph, but we only need it once since we're combining those graphs. And I'm going to type that in, uh, or paste that in, and I'm going to change the case to uppercase. And this graph, the or this text, the size is correct, and the tracking is correct. So 14 point negative four avenir medium, that's correct. I just want to center that and I'm going to turn on my guides and I see that I have that center guide there so I'm going to just nudge it over using the arrow keys so that that little node is directly in the center. Once we have our title and subhead in place for this graph Next thing I'd like to do is to drag out another rectangle to measure the space between the bottom of the graph above and the border. Drag that down. And let's take a look. And it looks pretty close as it is. But what I want to do is I want to make sure that the spacing is even or consistent between all the different graphs. Next, we can add some clip art. So I'm going to use this cat illustration, and I'm going to use this dog illustration. And we're going to choose the appropriate color for each. Use the Reflect tool to rotate these. and then position and size them appropriately. OK, next thing that we can do is we can add some, um, some more text. There's an asterisk here on this subhead. And what we want to do is look in the Word document and notice that there's a note here that says percentage rounded to the nearest whole number and that's what the asterisk is referring to. So we need to add that in to our graph. Okay, so we want Avenir next medium. We'll make it 14 point and I'm going to make the asterisk itself We'll make that 24 points so that it's easy to see. Let's make the letting on this 21. All right, and I also want to make the tracking negative 25. And what I'm going to do is I am going to um, just manually hit the, the um, space bar to align that text. And I'm going to show my guides and draw a guideline to the bottom of this bottom bar. And I want to find that point of alignment so that my uh, so that my layout looks neat and organized. We have some more text to add, some informational text about cat and dog breeds. So I'm going to grab that from my Word document. And paste that in. And 
we are going to change the color of that to dark brown and that's also what I want to do for this text I forgot to do that we're going to align the top of this text with the top of our of our title We want to put negative 25 tracking on this. I don't want any of these hyphens, so I'm going to click my cursor before the hyphenated word, hold shift and return. It's called a soft return. To get rid of that hyphen, I'm going to do that down here as well. And I'm also going to manually space this so that it looks like it's wrapping around the image. I don't want it to overlap. So I'm going to hit delete and then shift return and then I can just put some spaces in there. Same thing here. All right, and I'm going to adjust the size of my dog here a little bit. So I need to unlock him. All right, I made a few adjustments to the text to make it fit just the way I want it. And the last finishing touch on this is to add our leaping cat. And we're going to add a uh, dog over here. I'm going to Just fit him right in here. We're going to put him on the line, the border line here. All right, and we're going to use the clipping mask in the same way that we've done before. And we have completed our first bar graph.